Wyoming. This is Zach with 8020 Media. Today we are creating a video on the 3.5 liter Ford EcoBoost engine and we're going to go through primarily common problems in this video, talk about some common issues with the Ford 3.5 EcoBoost. We're also going to touch on a little bit of background about the engine and a couple specs. Uh, but again, primary focus here is common problems, um, but we'll jump in with a little bit of background info here. So to, to start up, the uh, 3.5 EcoBoost was first introduced in 2011. It was actually, the, the first concept came out in 2007, uh, but it wasn't until 2011 it was actually released in a production vehicle, notably the F-150, which is what the 3.5 EcoBoost is best known uh, for its use in. It's also in a number of other cars like the Lincoln Navigator, uh, the Ford GT, although that's a separate engine. We'll kind of circle back to that at some point in the video. Uh, it is the same base kind of engine, but there are some updates to um, enable it to create much more power in the Ford GT. Uh, but anyway, introduced in 2011. In 2017, there was a notable update to the engine. Ford came out with the second generation 3.5 EcoBoost. One of the biggest changes there, and this is important because it does kind of tie into one of the issues we'll be talking about with the 3.5 EcoBoost. For the second gen engine, they actually added um, port fuel injection alongside the standard direct injection. Uh, so that's going to tie into carbon buildup problems and, and a couple other little things we chat about when we move into the common problems for the EcoBoost. Um, another big change with that was they also introduced the 10R80 10 speed automatic transmission. Um, which I know is kind of a love-hate thing for, for some people. Uh, it's a good transmission that um, always seems to be right in the perfect power band, but it's also been known to have a couple problems here and there. Um, and then also in 2017, Ford did update the turbochargers a little bit. Um, they switched to electronic wastegates, um, changed to lighter turbine wheels and a couple other small turbocharger updates to help the second gens deliver even more power and torque than the first generation. Um, which speaking of the, the first gen engines, um, looking at the primary numbers of 2011 to 2016 F-150, which again is the most popular um, application for the 3.5 EcoBoost. Um, that engine offered 365 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Later on, that output, even for the first gen, was bumped up in the Lincoln Navigator, which I believe occurred in 2016, where those first gen engines um, managed to make it to a peak of 400, or sorry, 380 horsepower. Um, and then with the second gen, uh, especially the newer ones, I believe this is for the 2021 Plus, the 3.5 EcoBoost in the 2021 Plus F-150 makes 450 horsepower, 510 pound-feet of torque. Um, and then again, there's the Ford GT example, which makes 660 horsepower and 550 torque. But there were some internal changes and, and other changes to the 3.5 EcoBoost to allow it to make that extra power. It is a, you know, even the base engine, not the Ford GT, is still a strong engine. But don't be fooled and think that you can just easily, you know, turn this into a 660 horsepower engine because. While it's the same base design in the Ford GT, there are a number of differences, uh, quite a few different parts in that engine um, to enable it to, to make that much more power than the standard engines. Um, also, with that out of the way, kind of some of the specs and, and power for the EcoBoost, another important thing to reference is towing capacity. Uh, since it is so popular in the F-150, believe it or not, the 3.5 EcoBoost does actually offer the best, the highest towing capacity. Uh, we won't get into specific numbers because that depends on a lot of different factors um, with the specific truck in question, but out of the lineup of Ford engines, the 3.5 EcoBoost does offer the highest towing capacity for the F-150, and that is above, um, of course, a smaller 2.7 EcoBoost um, offers more towing capacity than the much larger 5.0 Coyote, as well as the, the hybrid setup with the, uh, the 3.5 Power Boost, which is actually the 3.5 EcoBoost combined with, with the hybrid engine. So that's a little background. In the future, we might actually make a video and kind of talk more about the 3.5 EcoBoost um, and dive into a bit more background and, and kind of specs and uh, performance potential mods, tuning, so on and so forth. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and jump straight into a few common problems um, and, and preface this with the fact that 3.5 EcoBoost is a pretty reliable engine overall, uh, especially the newer second gen engines. Again, Ford made some good updates in 2017 with the newer engines to address a couple of the earlier problems 
uh, with the engine, which again, weren't, weren't typically major problems, but they were some great updates. Um, diving in, let's start off first. One of the primary issues, and, and this is something, uh, I shouldn't say one of the primary issues, this is something that could kind of be debated, but one issue, especially with earlier gen engines, is the possibility of carbon buildup. And that primarily affects the first gen because those engines only use direct injection. And basically, direct injection sprays fuel directly into the cylinders. All engines produce some degree of oil blow-by. Um, so that's oil actually making it back into the intake track, where it will then stick to the intake valves. Um, and not just the valve, but will also stick to the sides of the intake ports. So that can disrupt airflow going into the engine, which can obviously affect performance and cause a couple other issues like engine misfires, uh, stuttering, hesitation, power loss, uh, quite a few things that, that you can notice when you have a, a you know severe amount of carbon buildup. Um, but the good news is in 2017, when Ford added port injection, that means that the engines now have fuel sprayed also into the intake ports, which is able to wipe away any of that oil blow by, thereby helping reduce the possibility, effectively eliminating you know most carbon buildup. Um, one thing that, that is interesting is, is all direct injection engines suffer some degree of carbon buildup when it's only direct injection, but it seems like Ford actually did do a good job um, managing that carbon buildup. There are different things, um, different things that, that affect the amount of, of, um, of carbon deposit or oil blow by that occurs. And by reducing that, you obviously reduce carbon buildup and, and the chance of it kind of occurring or becoming very severe, which it seems like Ford did a good job at that. Um, but still with those first gen engines, it's usually good maintenance to, to walnut blaster, or kind of clean those intake valves and ports roughly every 100,000 to 125,000 miles. It's possible you could go longer without that, but again, you may start noticing some symptoms and side effects like power loss, although that can be tough to notice because carbon buildup isn't something that, that occurs um, suddenly. It's something that occurs over a longer period of time. And so instead of that power loss being a very sudden thing to happen, it's, it's more of a gradual um, thing that happens over time. And, and so it's not like you just lose 20 horsepower suddenly one morning when you wake up and start up the, the engine, uh, it's gradual. Um, but anyway, that's, that's one of the, the main issues that again Ford addressed with that addition of port fuel injection with the second gen engine. So great update on Ford's part. Um, not to get sidetracked too much, but the addition of port injection also does help lower emissions and improve fuel economy, which direct injection is usually better for both things, but it has a couple flaws where port injection uh, does minor things better. So it's actually just a, a great update all around, not only for power performance, um, aftermarket potential, so on and so forth, but also for emissions and for overall reliability and reducing carbon buildup. Um, Moving on to the next 3.5 EcoBoost common engine problem, we're looking at the timing chain. And this predominantly affected 2011 to 2014 models. Um, even though the second gen didn't come out till 20, 2017, Ford made a couple updates to the timing chain in 2015, which seems to be an effective long-term solution. So we're not seeing nearly as many timing chain um, guide or tensioner issues as we were with some of those earlier 2011 to 2014 models. Um, timing chains failing can, um, any timing chain related failure can be severe uh, depending on, on how it fails. Um, but the 3.5 EcoBoost is an interference engine, meaning there actually is some overlap in the area that the, um, the valves and the pistons travel. And so if timing is allowed to get too far off track, the valves and pistons could actually collide, causing pretty significant damage. That's a very, very rare occurrence. Usually the timing chain does not fail in that drastic um, of a fashion, but it can happen, so it's something to be aware of. But again, the good news is Ford did make the adjustments and the updates to the timing chain in 2015, which seems to be an effective long-term solution. That's not to say that fluky issues don't still occur from time to time, but for the most part, the timing chain is, is a non-issue on, on 2015 plus models or older models that receive the updated timing chain already. Um, but again, still something to be aware of and, and be on the lookout for if you are looking at one of those older EcoBoost engines. 
Um, in terms of actual flaws with the engine, that's really about all we, we you know, have to, to chat about with the 3.5 EcoBoost. There are other things, you know, we could get into uh, certain things like oil leaks and, and coolant leaks and cooling system issues, but these are kind of problems that occur on a lot of different cars and they're not necessarily common problems in the sense that, you know, they don't affect a large number of 3.5 EcoBoosts, but there's still problems that can and do happen from time to time, just not things that, that we feel are really important or common enough to include in a conversation about some 3.5 EcoBoost common engine issues. Uh, so the next thing we have is really just more maintenance and, and it kind of highlights one of the drawbacks of a higher power, higher performance twin turbo engine like the EcoBoost. And that is addressing another common issue of, of ignition coils and spark plugs. Um, it's one of those things that I wouldn't really call a problem in the sense that plugs and coils are a standard maintenance item, but unlike a typical naturally aspirated engine that's, that's lower performance, ignition coils can last 120,000 plus miles, spark plugs can last 60 to 80,000 plus miles. On the EcoBoost with the turbochargers, you're going to have higher cylinder pressures. It puts a lot more stress on the ignition system. Um, so you're going to need to replace the spark plugs generally every 30 to 50,000 miles. If you start tuning and modding the EcoBoost, then you'll have to change them even sooner. Um, and likewise, ignition coils, instead of lasting 120,000 plus miles like they do on a lot of um, lower performance naturally aspirated engines, you'll probably have to change those every 60 to 80,000 miles. So again, not a true issue because it's a standard maintenance item regardless. Just something that's going to come up more on an engine like the 3.5 EcoBoost than on your typical um, naturally aspirated engine with, with lower performance. Um, so that's really kind of the, the three things that, uh, that come up with the EcoBoost. Actually, one more comment tying into the spark plugs and ignition coils. Again, just kind of highlighting one of the trade-offs of, of getting a turbocharged engine. They're great because they make more power, make more torque um, for their engine size and can offer better fuel economy. But there are more components to possibly fail Turbocharger issues, uh, boost leaks usually aren't a, a huge concern on the EcoBoost, but they do happen. Um, it's just a couple more parts that, that can and sometimes do fail um, or have little issues or kind of drawbacks to them. Um, but again, overall, as we kind of started off this discussion, the common problems discussion, 3.5 EcoBoost, overall, we believe it, it offers, delivers above average reliability. Um, it's, it's not going to be a perfect or flawless engine, but no engine is. And compared to kind of the average engine that, that we review and discuss and, and, and research and work on, the 3.5 EcoBoost is, is definitely above average in terms of reliability. Keep up with maintenance. This is stuff you know, that you should do on any engine, um, especially on higher performance engines though. You know, keep up with maintenance, change your oil on time, change other fluids on time, always use high quality oils if problems occur fix them sooner than later you know don't don't let a problem linger for ages do that on the 3.5 eco boost you know take care of all that maintenance and there's a good chance that these engines will make it to 200,000 maybe even 300,000 plus miles with with very few issues along the way again there're going to be some some fluky problems or some one off issues you know if you make it that long with an eco boost you're probably going to have an oil leak or two you might have a coolant leak or two in another miscellaneous, miscellaneous issue or two, but for the most part, expect to get 200,000 plus miles out of the 3.5 EcoBoost without running into many severe costly issues.